Now that you've figured out what your thesis is, your evidence, now you're ready to actually write the speech, put the outline together. And that's what I'm gonna focus on in this particular section, is putting the outline together and preparing it. And so I put the steps in that process here in chronological order, in the order you do them, okay? And I did that on purpose to show you the progression. So first thing you have to do is develop your main points. And by develop, what I mean is create them, come up with them. What are your main points going to be? And that's gonna be based on, on a number of factors. Number one, what your subject is. Uh, number two, what your perspective is about that, what your beliefs are, what you're trying to sell. Uh, you're gonna also look at your audience and see what they think. And you're going to begin to figure out what's possible in front of that particular audience. And then you're gonna look at your evidence and you're gonna say, okay, what kind of evidence do I need to really come up with and really develop the speech in, in the proper way? So once you've done that, that's really, and actually that's the hardest part to come up with it, to be creative. The second thing you're gonna do is you're going to actually write the main point. And there are five steps. And we talked about this earlier in the semester about when I gave you the outline. And so this is just sort of a repetition of that. But in the, in the, pre, in the preparation, you got five steps. You're gonna state the main point, tell me what it is. The cow jumped over the moon. Celtics are the best basketball dynasty ever. You know, whatever your main point is. Then you're gonna give evidence in the second part. And you're gonna say, here's my evidence to prove that. Your third step is going to be to then explain how the evidence proves that main point. So those three get all connected back. And so you would lay that out, you know, on a sheet of paper and say, okay, here's how I'm gonna do that. Or maybe on the PowerPoint you're gonna use. The fourth step is you're going to summarize what you just said. Now, why in the world would you do this? You just said why this was all true. Why would you summarize it? Well, because people don't listen well. And so it's very important to repeat that main point again here summarize it. Now, the reason we do that is because we want to do a lot of repetition. The critical thing here is to say it in a different way than you said when you stated it originally. Different words, okay? And that's really hard to do, and we don't have time to demonstrate that, which is really the tough part. And then you're going to do a transition from that, po that point into the speech itself, the next part of the speech, whether it be the conclusion, whether it be another main point, whatever it is, you're gonna write a transitional statement for that. Okay, so those five steps are, are, are what I mean by creating the main point. Then you're gonna select an order. Now, what I mean by an order is what point do you put first? And, you know, there's, there's some strategy here, depending on the audience. For example, you might decide to put the most important thing first, the thing you think that they really need to know to get your thesis. Okay, that makes sense. Or you might want to wait and bring it in slowly. And I would especially do that if you have an audience that you think might be uh, opposed to your idea. You might need to bring them in gradually to your point of view. Or I could put it chronologically, just like I did here, to show you the order. That's what chrono, pro, chrono means, in chronological order, in sequence. Or I might do it by topical pattern. And by that, I would mean I would break it up into say, for example, I could do this by saying, okay, main points, introduction, conclusion, instead of the way that I did do it. And so I would talk about each one of those parts, okay? You might use a problem solution. You might say, in your first main point, you might say, hey, here's the problem. We got this problem. And then you're gonna say, here are the, here are the, here's the solution. And your, your solution might be, you know, have many pieces to it but that'll help the audience sort of organize it in their mind. And you're going to do a lot of repetition within those main points. Okay, now you write these first, these first three things first. You write the main points of the speech before, this is important, before you do the introduction. That way you know what you're introducing. Okay? Because what a lot of people do is they'll write the intro first, write the body of the speech, and then when they get to the conclusion, realize they have a different speech than they thought they did. So in the introduction, you're gonna have four pieces. You're gonna have an attention step, 
You're going to have a thesis statement, a preview, and a transition. Now, the attention step is the most important part of the whole speech. That's your hook. Because what you're going to do is you're going to say to the audience, here's why you should pay attention to me. Here's why this, this topic matters. So it's a story, an example, an illustration, a startling statement, something that reach out and literally hook their mind to your, to your, your talk. Okay, then you're just going to tell me what your thesis is. Now, the Celtics are the best basketball dynasty in history. Okay, you're just going to tell them. We wouldn't want to do that to Laker fans because they'll get all excited. Okay, third, you're going to preview. You're going to say, here's what I'm going to do in my speech today. Now, the reason you do that is so that people will be comfortable. You'd be surprised. They've done a lot of research on how nervous audiences are when a speaker gets up. And so you're going to try to make them feel better. Then you're going to do a transition. And you're going to say, okay, here's the body of the, here, here's the opening. I've got you hooked now. Now let's get into the body, which is these three things here. All right? So you're going to use that opening to hook them, to get them interested, to get them fascinated with your subject. All right? Final step in your preparation is to, is to prepare the conclusion. And like the introduction, four parts. You're going to do a summary of the main points. So you're going to repeat all your main points once again, but again, different wording is the key element here. You got to say it differently. That's why good speakers have to have a big vocabulary. You're going to restate your main point. Your, excuse me, your thesis, pardon me. You're going to restate your thesis one more time, again, in different words. Then you're going to give in the third part what I like to call the action step, like I want you to believe this. I want you to go home and study this. I want you to be able to use this better, whatever your action is. Now, if it's informative, it's a different action step. If it's persuasive, it's a different action step. If it's a, you know, other kind of speech, then it's, it's, it's more of an action step or a belief system. Okay. The final part of your, of your uh, conclusion is the second most important part of the speech, and that's the tag. And what the tagline is, is it's like a, the closer. Because you had your opening, and see, this is how you have to plan this. You have your opening where you had that hook, you know, the attention step. And then here at the end, what you do is you have something where you go back and reconnect to that. And what it does is it gives the speech coherence. It gives the speech finality. And then you literally push the speech out and lay it at the feet of your audience. And they go, click, that's it. Thank you all very much.